morning, everybody. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Talk a little bit about how we all can win in this era of new convenience. Um, today, what are we going to talk about? Tell you a little bit about me and this culinary edge, not too much about me, more about how my businesses, both the restaurant companies that I participate in and also my consultancy, look to the future to solve the problems that we're all facing every day. Um, we're going to look at kind of what's happening in the marketplace, too. What are these drivers behind the growth and convenience? And then, obviously, how do we apply the knowledge to win together? So a little bit about me. I'm the founder, as you mentioned, Starboard Chicken. Uh, I'm also the founder of The Culinary Edge. I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. And about 19 years ago, I started a company called Pacific Catch uh, Fresh Fish Grill, a uh, West Coast fish house based in California. I'm now a uh, board member and uh, director there. So a little bit about the Culinary Edge. We're a premier food and beverage innovation consultancy. What is that? Are we all about food? Well, we're more about things like taking Michelin star chefs, culinary innovators, design thinkers, brand strategists, and really pulling them together in their minds to create the future of food. Uh, you can see we've got quite a long list of customers and clients we work with. Uh, we've been around 20 years now. We just celebrated our 20-year anniversary, and if anyone knows what it takes to keep a company going for 20 years, a uh, couple of gray hairs, absolutely. Um, and I'm very passionate about the people who've come from the Culinary Edge. They've, they've moved on to start numerous restaurant companies and to work in some great places out in the world. Uh, we work with 30% uh, of the top 200 restaurants. We've worked with seven of the top 10. From the Culinary Edge, come Starbird. Oh, and also we've got a podcast. Got to listen to the podcast, which is awesome. Uh, that, that podcast is called um, Heroes and Headwinds. And really, it's, we're talking to a lot of the heroes in our industry and how they tackle the challenges that exist. Uh, lots to learn there. Some folks here in this room have been on that. I appreciate your participation. So Starbird is positively delicious chicken. And ultimately, Starbird is defining the future of fast food. What does that mean? It's, talk, it's really it's about chef-quality food and the ingredients we serve, human-centered design, and frictionless technology, right? And that manifests in a lot of ways. You can see some of our food here, some of our technology here, some of our human-led store design, our virtual presence, our LTOs that keep people attracted. And we're really redefining the restaurant in its own way, right? We learn from the changes in society, we adapt to them, but we also want to be constantly skating to where the puck is going. I think the timer's not counting down, and I swear I'll go over that if it doesn't. <laughs> um, so on a bigger scale, though, like the definition, I'm going, to, I'm going to trip on this rug, too. You should get this shag at your house. It's pretty fabulous. <laughs> Just working with it. It kind of matches my graphics, too. I'm loving this. So think about a restaurant, right? We all have different visions of what a restaurant is. I mean, maybe even like close your eyes, everybody, for a second. Just for a second. And picture, picture a restaurant, OK? So what, do you, what do you see? People call it. What are you seeing? Anyone? Delicious food. Tables and chairs. The bar. Favorite part. Dining room, pretty traditional concepts, right? It, historically, it might look something like this, the full service on the left, or this limited service, maybe ordering at the counter at the right. But now why don't you think a little bit about convenience in restaurants? What comes to mind? You know, think about a convenient restaurant. What comes into your heads, anyone? Pickup shelves. Pick Takeout. Take drive throughs, drive -throughs. It's a hint there, right? It's going to look, you know, could be like a drive through historically, or maybe like a pizza delivery, right? Showing up at your door. This is sort of historically, we've had so many years of these same visions of what convenience is, right? But today, it, it's really not that clear. It's really evolving. It's kind of beginning to blur a little bit, right? The needs of our consumers are changing. The needs of the space are evolving. And because of this, you know, the restaurant industry is really becoming increasingly polarized, right? On the left, you may have, you know, an entertainment experiential thing that's kind of hyped up to get people to come out. On the right, you may have a traditional convenient restaurant. But right now in the middle, it's really becoming challenging, right? We're creating incredible experiences 
right? Attracting diners to finally come out again. Yet convenience seems to continue to be winning. And because of that, we're going to focus on that today. And why is convenience winning? And what do we have to do about it so that everyone, no matter what kind of restaurant you operate or support the operations of, can apply the mindset of the consumer in a convenience world? So what's happening out there? Obviously, COVID happened. It's still happening in many ways. It's nice to see many of your smiling faces. It's great to see smiles again. It's my favorite part of getting out and about again. You can see expression, emotion. Um, but what's happening in this polar divide is that convenience-based restaurants, quick service restaurants, are already back. And if many of them, the top ones, are double-digit way up over 2019. Starboard, fortunately, is comp 25% a year, 2019 to 2020, 2020 to 21, and once again, 21 to 22. Thank you for lots of luck and being at the right place at the right time. But if you juxtapose that against the other industries, right, the other segments, casual in the middle is really struggling, only at 81%, and fine dining a little bit more because of some of the experiences that are happening. With the economy going the way it is, though, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. So right now, convenience dining is rapidly becoming the consumer's new normal. And I'm going to talk about a couple drivers behind this convenience movement. So what did COVID uh, cement the most? Digital behavior, right? Everyone's got their phone. They're all living digitally out loud. But when we look to who's really driving this and where the future is, we really have to look at Gen Z, right? We talked for 10 years about millennials and all the things that millennials were about, and we're like, huh, what's, what's the difference in Gen Z? How are they functioning? How are they participating? And the interesting thing about Gen Z is that um, they're only online. They just start there. When they even think about, how do I want to learn about something, it immediately starts digitally. They're a very powerful group of spenders, but they're not going inside the doors of the four walls as much as everyone else. So 11% of Gen Zers, there are 11% fewer Gen Zers inside a restaurant today at the same age that millennials were. So this is just continuing to decline and continuing to decline. And we've got to reach out and connect to these people. The good news is they're obsessed with food and beverage. They love it. There is more digital content happening today around food and beverage than ever before. And people are interested in food, they're connecting through food, and how they're seeing this digitally is really the new frontier to create those connections. And basically, when you think about this digital experience, right, in connecting with Gen Z, 80% of them are like, more likely to order takeout from a restaurant now than they were before the pandemic. It's just this quantum shift that's happening, right? And 54% are monthly active users of 3PD, right? And pretty much everyone in the Gen Z and millennial um, camps um, are okay and comfortable using digital technology. So if you don't have a digital way to connect to your restaurant, you're missing the boat, no matter what area of the restaurant you're in today. That said, um, this is the way that people are living their lives, as we mentioned, right? And 53% of people said that purchasing takeout food was essential to the way they work and live. It's essential to how they live. They can't even conceive of living, the majority of people, without ordering takeout and getting things off premise, right? And so because of this behavioral change, consumers are often disassociating themselves from the four walls of a restaurant. And they're more concentrated on the product than the place of the restaurant. And operators on the flip side of this are having to use technology tools to meet the consumer's demand for this digital marketplace. And whether this is kiosks, we implemented kiosks at, at Star, but I always thought that the phone was going to be the kiosk, right? Just in the way that everyone thought the QR code had gone away. I was just in the hallway. We're talking like, I love the QR code. And I remember when there was a QR code, it was like, they're using QR codes. That is like not OK, right? And so we've basically re-energized re uh, re re the QR code to be part of our lives, along with things like self-order kiosks. And people often say, well, why would someone walk into a restaurant and order out a kiosk when they can just talk to a human being? It's like, well, 
Does anyone have kids here? They don't like to talk to human beings, right? <laughs> they actually can control their journey, they can control their experience so much more uh, in an environment of a kiosk. It's also good for the operator, right? Because the operator is going to have greater order accuracy, it's gonna have higher check, it's gonna have greater labor productivity, and I'm not here to sell kiosks, I'm just saying it's changed our business. Today, 85% of our consumers order digitally. 85% in a $100,000 week, that's $85,000 of sales in one restaurant coming through digital channels. So we have to pay attention to digital? I think so. And so because of that also, restaurants are thinking about how do I bring this restaurant experience to life digitally, right? And the user experience is key and critical to be successful there. So this journey of the user experience, you have to engage this guest every single step of the way on this journey. The winners are truly able to make this happen. It also improves order accuracy tremendously. And on the back end, there's a lot of new technologies. How many things, so, oh, there's the, I don't know, the, the drone that's going to collect your food and bring it to your house. A lot of people are using this as a stunt to get attention. There are certain technologies that are ready to launch, and there are certain technologies that are challenged, right? That are going to take much, much longer, whether it's jurisdictional or the cost to produce it. But these two technologies right here, I think, are real and for here to stay. Uh, San Francisco, where I live, now you can book a ride without a driver. Just started. It's been like, oh, well, there's the phase three protections and blah, 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 blah. Like nobody really knows what that means. I didn't know what it means. All I know is I can call one of these new cars and be picked up without a driver today. That tells me that we are ready to launch, okay? That means that this has been approved one place. Uber started there, Lyft started there, okay? Once the jurisdictions allowed this legally, it's ready to happen. So I would be on the lookout for how you're gonna create your presence in the marketplace through through cars of this nature. Domino's is at the forefront of it. I'm super impressed by them. Robots, on the other hand, some of them work great, and some of them you need four people to watch the robot to make sure that the robot's doing what the robot's supposed to do. But I do love this Cafe X, things that are simple processes, right? Um, win in the robot world, and also things that are bulk production. You think about assembly lines and plants. Those are the type of technologies that I believe are gonna take the next steps. So what? Who cares, right? No, but so what? We know COVID accelerated this digital first trend, right? It was already underway, but it's accelerated, and you've heard that it's accelerated tremendously, right? And there's a lot of tech-oriented solutions that are helping not only the consumer, but also happen, helping the operator. So on a second front that I wanna talk about is, what's a meal? Close your eyes and think about what, what is a meal? Who are you with? Where are you having it? Is it the same that it was 10 years ago? Is it in all the same places you were? You know, right now, this shift in the American family life, you know, something out of the movies. This just doesn't exist in most places today. It's really, really changing dramatically fast. And they're less sit-down affairs and are increasingly, increasingly multitasked, right? Who, um, who double screens? Anybody? Who triple screens, right? We are co-processors, probably relatively inefficiently, but we this attention disorder that we have to be doing multiple things at once, right? This is happening in the newest generation more than ever. I have seen my son triple screen before. I'm just like, man, he's got phone, computer, television. Watching the game, talking to his friends, taking pictures, doing homework, it's like mind blowing. So we have to think about the consumer as someone who is constantly looking for our attention and looking to be uh, reached in different and new ways, right? So this has also led to a broader definition of where meals may come from. And what is even considered a meal, right? What is a meal? Et voila. 40% of Gen Zers say they prefer to eat small meals throughout the day. Literally, four out of 10 are not eating three meals a day. What does that even mean for how to feed this generation? How do they even think about eating or integrating food or meals or experiences into their life? 
This is on its head in many, many ways, right? The convenience store business is we get more calls right now from convenience stores at the culinary edge than any other industry. It's the fastest shifting industry because people want to have not just a roller dog hot dog. They want to have good food. They want it to meet the standards and needs that they have. And they want the experience when they walk in to feel safe and delicious and a way to serve their needs. This snacking culture is really what's driving this though. And the definition of drinking your meal is even broader than ever. You know, there was the home meal replacement, I think, of uh, Juice Club, if you remember what Jamba Juice was originally called. Now it's called Jamba. It's not even Jamba Juice anymore. Um, the smoothie was the meal replacement. But today, any type of beverage can become this meal replacement. You look at Dutch Brothers' success, right? Pandemic, no one's out, no one's getting coffee. They're up, right? They're serving, you know, I don't call it a meal, it's a bomb of uh, sugar and happiness and joy, I guess, in your day, which is no one's going to knock. But when you look at a company like that compared to some of the other, let's say, IPOs that have happened, and everyone's a little in the tank today, but realistically, to create an $8 billion company on a 10% uh, food and beverage or food, food, beverage and pa packaging cost product, hence they're worth $8 billion. The potential is screaming, and the culture that they've created behind it is fantastic. So with a meal untethered to destination, you know, anything goes as long as getting food doesn't get in the way of living your life. So when you think about innovation, it's no longer constrained by the four walls of your restaurant, right? But it's constrained by the consumer's need for convenience. And, this new, and the, the industry is coming with tons of new innovations and product innovations and experiential innovations to allow the consumer new ways to dine. So no matter who you are, whatever segment of the industry you're in, whatever problems you're solving for, you can learn and participate in this convenience world. You know, it's like, I'm a high-end restaurant designer. Well, think about how people are learning about you. Think about how they're anticipating the experience. Think about how they're sharing it, right? So let's talk about some directives on how to win in convenience. So in order to stay relevant outside of your four walls, you've got to design brand touch points, as we'll call them today, at every step of this digital guest journey. What is this uh, digital guest journey? We've broken it down into five areas, and we're going to call them first, discovery. There's your product ordering, really how your guest orders your product. Uh, production, how your product comes to life. Transportation, how it reaches your guest and consumption. And I'll be happy to share this uh, at any time with folks, so I know you're meticulously taking notes. I always love that in presentations. So how do you engage the guests along it? And we're going to talk about these things in more specifics, but discoveries about the platform and SEO optimization. Are there brand partnerships that get attracted to you? What is the new news that's bringing people to you? How you order personalization on the app or through web or in ways that they order within uh, your walls. Uh, production. How do you ensure that the technology in the back end and the omni-channel convenience is occurring to ensure that your guests have a frictionless experience uh, through and through? Transportation. How do you create transparency? How do you remove anxiety? Anyone ever order uh, delivery food and wonder, where's my food? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it, it's such a, a, a Traumatic experience in the mind of the guest. One minute feels like 10, 10 minutes feels like an hour. And then obviously consumption, how people are eating the food, how they're receiving it, how they're unboxing it, and even how they're throwing it away to articulate what your brand is about. So what does this mean for you? Okay, think of your business like brick and mortar spaces, less like brick and mortar spaces, and more like direct to consumer brands, right? Think of the Caspers of the world, think of the brands that only show up at your door and you only can order digitally, right? And we have to design a guest experience thinking about these D2C brands. So how do you optimize for discovery on digital? All right, who's on TikTok? Raise your hand. Oh, come now, people. <laughs> okay, pull out your phone, those of you who are on TikTok. Go to your TikTok. I love, you're, you're right with me, thank you. I so appreciate the support. Type in your search, starboard chicken. <laughs> yeah. 
Anyone got it? Okay, great. Add and follow right now, please. <laughs> and uh, so TikTok's a new phenomenon. So many of you are on it, many are not. But the power of TikTok has been mind-blowing. So we've got a, a video, the first one pinned. And we're a small company, right? We're a small regional brand. 3.2 million people have viewed a video of some cool music and someone dunking a chicken tender in sauce. And I'm like, huh. That's cool, okay. We're kind of not a messy dunk sauce kind of brand, like mm, we are now. <laughs> so I think we need to think about what gets people excited about our brand and how do we broaden the base, right? This is a, a, a brand called um, Red Chicks. Over a million followers, okay? What about getting a face for your food? Who is representative, right? You've got, there you go, thank you. <laughs> I knew that would pop somewhere. <laughs> and I don't care, right? That's the song. Yeah. Exactly. I love it. I love it. So when consumers are thinking about Duncan right now, they're thinking about Charlie. I don't know. What does she have? 50 million, 100 million followers? And it's a way that it can be relatable. It's a human face. No, not, so many people are not walking into the doors of a Duncan. Many of them go through the drive throughs today. They're trying to relate on a human level. This is a way that people can discover. So you gotta think about how can we, how can my brand be discovered in ways that are new and creative? You gotta promote new ways to win, all sorts of new productions and ideas. I'm not sure Dijon mustard ice cream is a, is a great uh, thing to promote or move forward, but you know, LTOs and innovation are key and critical. I mean, the, I'm in the chicken business, and I watched Popeye's phenomenon from a few years ago and said, wow, this is incredible. And the scarcity made it exciting. The new product made it exciting. And to be honest with you, the product was pretty damn good. It delivered on promise. And what have they done with it? Well, let's keep building on it. They introduced their Buffalo Ranch. They've got new news to keep connecting with their consumers. They've got news that's saying that there's lines of people. There's just two weeks ago, new restaurant opens in England, 2,000 sandwiches, units sold out. It's like, this is newsworthy stuff. Innovation is key and critical for people to discover you. Next thing in terms of this is ordering, right? This is the next part of the journey. And building personalization in the ordering experience is really key to this success. So I love the brand voice of Phil's. Phil's is a coffee place based in San Francisco, started in a little corner market, and they've had their ups and downs like many brands over the last few years with a big urban footprint, but their, their brand voice comes through so loud and clear when you're on their app, and it's just, there's a calmness, and if you're a Phil's user, you can really connect to the experience, which is so much about you engaging with your uh, individual coffee maker in a Phil's coffee, and they bring it to life digitally. Now let's talk about the middle, the production piece, and taking advantage of omnichannel ordering with tech streamlining. I love what Chipotle's doing here. This is just, as, as an operator, and our number one issue is order accuracy to this day. And most brands will say the same thing for anything off-premise. And if you see here, they've created stations where literally, if you're building the bowl or burrito or whatever it is on the right, those purple boxes are literally the places that you need to go to get the product to build that individual item. And so the technology to allow for the, the back end experience to create accuracy, to make the work easier for the person who has to make this food every day is really on the rise. Next, I wanna talk about transportation. Bring the guest along for the ride. It's all about the transparency associated with that guest uh, receiving of your products. And keeping in touch from start to finish is key. And, and we're not gonna say that all the technologies talk to each other smoothly, and I know the technology folks are always working on my API talking to your API and things of that nature, which I still don't totally understand, but uh, we, we, I'm grateful that we have people who do understand it. But to be able to connect with your guests all along the way, to reduce that anxiety, to let them know what's going on in ways that you've never been able to do before. And then finally, on the consumption side, it's so much about bolstering the product with surprise and delight, right? Unboxing is an amazing thing. Who watches unboxing videos on retails? Anyone, like, I mean, 
it's mesmerizing, right? I mean, the packaging on some of this stuff is a sin, but it's like, it's really bringing the experience to the home, right? At Pacific Catch, we created bentos to bring the brand home, right? And this isn't even the final packaging. But how do you create this experience where you think about what you're eating in the, in the restaurant, how you're sharing things, the colors, and then finally, whoops, you even think about how do you get rid of this stuff at the end, right? So at the final part of this consumption journey, think about what are they throwing away, right? This is 100% compostable materials. So when people throw these things away or use reusable things, these are key and critical and important. Certainly more in the Bay Area, people are just obsessed with it, and it actually has built a lot of brand loyalty to be able to do so. So where does this leave us? Convenience movement is pioneering new ways for diners to experience your restaurants. And with digital touch points that engage the guests all the way from discovery through their consumption, you too can have the power to engage and impact your guests. Think about how you'll reach them today. Thank you. <laughs>